So our big game of the week this week is obviously Texas versus Alabama, and we're going to get into it with both perspectives here on the show. We've got Tony Sukalis of Tide Illustrated, and we've got Raheel Ramzanali, one half of the world-famous No Layups crew, here on the show. What's up, guys? Hey, how's it going? What's up, man? Doing all right. Hey, uh, so, Tony, full disclosure, Raheel and I have done TV and radio together for the last 15 years. He's a Longhorn. I'm an Aggie. We make it work. It's, it is what it is. So um, let, let, let's start things off with you, Tony. No issues in the opener, but I know that Nick Saban always has got something to nitpick on. What did he nitpick on? Was it Jameer Gibbs? No, it was the uh, consistency of the running game. If you look, Alabama's actually at fourth in the nation, averaging like 8.7 yards a carry, but that's kind of deceiving. I mean, um, that doesn't really speak. It's not indicative necessarily of the run blocking that they had. I mean, 100 of those yards came on scrambles by uh Bryce Young on on you know passing plays then you take out a big run by Jameer Gibbs and another you know big run by Jameer Miller and all of a sudden you're averaging like uh, on a consistent basis around 3.8 yards a carry now that's not the way football is played you can't just hypothetically subtract things but I think what Nick Saban's saying is that he wants it to be more consistency and not more feast and famine when it comes to getting big runs and so I think that's something that they'll be focusing on heading into this week two game against Texas is just getting more consistent. I mean, more five, six, seven yard runs instead of, you know, having a big run and then getting stuffed and then having another big run. Raheel, what about Quinn Ewers? I, I saw, obviously, he struggled initially, but give us an assessment of the entire game. Yeah, you know, the deep ball, what everyone was excited to watch with Quinn is that arm action, how deep he can throw, how accurate he can be. That never got going. Uh, his intermediate game was good and, you know, he was fine, but this was his first game in, what, three years now almost, right, since high school. So it was a good game to get going, and it was nice to see him make some adjustments in the second half and get some big plays. But most of those big plays were just getting the ball to the right player and letting those players, letting those explosive receivers and running backs take care of the rest. And that's going to be the big thing coming up this week is can Quinn make big plays and not just give it to the players and let them make plays? Tony, when it comes to uh, Nick Saban and his relationships with assistant coaches, it always becomes its own storyline. But what about when it comes to Sark? What kind of relationship do they have? And is it being talked about there? Yeah, they have a lot of respect for each other. And I've heard you know Sark saying that Saban saved his career. And I think you know Saban would tell you that Sark's probably one of the best you know assistants he's ever had in his whole tenure at Alabama. I mean, you look at that offense that Sark put together, especially the 2020 offense. Now he had a lot of tools to work with, but I mean, when you, when you have an offense that has three Heisman top five vote getters, that, that's pretty crazy. Um, so I, I think, you know, Steve Sarkeesian is one of the best offensive minds in the, in the game. And I think Nick Saban has a ton of respect for him and you can't really fault someone for taking the job at Texas. It's one of the biggest jobs in, in America. So I, you know, I, I think that there's just a respect both ways for, for those coaches. Raheel, both teams scored 50-plus points. Oh, you look like you're going to say something. Go ahead. What's the joke? I was going to say something. I know Alabama's got to be missing him just a little bit, right? Like, Because we've course. gotten the Bill O'Brien treatment, with, you know, being in Houston and <laughs> watching him with the Texans, and it's so frustrating. And there were times last year you're watching that offense, you go, oh, Bill O'Brien strikes again. I mean, Bill O'Brien had his moments. Well, let's not forget that he did, you know, produce the first Heisman Trophy quarterback uh, in, in school history. And Alabama didn't lose last year because of their offense necessarily. I mean, they had injuries and then they just ran up against a, a really great Georgia defense in that championship game. And that Georgia team was great. Um, but it, Bill O'Brien had his moments where it was a little bit frustrating. But I don't necessarily think he's as bad as what he gets made out to be. Look. He's not no, going to be making bad. any trades for Alabama. And I think that's really <laughs> when it, when you criticize Bill O'Brien, it's maybe his GM work that really needs needs work. I don't necessarily think he's the worst coach and not the worst offensive coach. Now, if if you know Alabama was trading in the transfer portal or something, yeah, I think maybe it's time to uh to, to pick someone else to do that. But um, I think that uh I think Sarkeesian's a better offensive mind, but I do think that Bill O'Brien's he's he's. He's fine, and I think he get the, it's a little bit overblown, some of the cr criticism he gets. Well, I'm just going to tell you from an A&M perspective, I love when he calls the plays inside the five-yard line. To me, he can do that. <laughs> that was the game, I think, that really started it, though. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that when you look back at that A&M game, the, a lot of the critiques that Bill O'Brien gets are, are, you know, why, why wasn't he just running the ball? or um, Yeah, so I, I, maybe that's been ironed out. Maybe it hasn't, um, but you really can't look at last year and, and be too hard on him. I mean, because Alabama had a great offense last year. 
All right, Rahil, uh, so 50-plus points from Texas and Alabama. If you are a University of Texas fan, is that what you're look, thinking about? Hey, the only way we win this game is in a shootout? Yeah, that's it, because I don't know about the defense just yet. Uh, they looked a little bit faster going side to side, and there was a little bit better of a rush, something that Texas lacked major last year. I mean, it was just bad last year. Um, but again, this is a different beast. This is an, an offense that is going to be fantastic throughout the entire year. You get a chance to match up against them. I don't know what kind of stops you're going to get. I don't know what they're going to do on special teams. The only hope is you look at your two best players on the team, and that's on the offensive side with Bijan Robinson and Xavier Worthy. And you just hope that some of those guys can make some big plays and the offense can go punch for punch like they did against LSU because I don't know if this defense can stop uh, Alabama's offense. Tony, let's talk about the uh, Alabama offensive line. So that's always been the, the big storyline, like one of the weaknesses potentially. Now, Texas does not, or at least did not, have a really good defense in 2021. But is it still a good barometer to see how the offensive line is doing? Because they do have athletes regardless. Definitely. And I think, you know, like I said, with the running game, you know, Texas, uh, obviously they did better against stopping the run against ULM, but this will be a different beast. Um, Texas struggled at stopping the run last year. So, I, you know, Alabama, you'd, you'd want to see them establish that consistency this week uh, against a better opponent than Utah State. You know, so, I mean, I think this is a, a good test in terms of talent. I, You know, what Texas is like a 20 point underdog. It's, that's a lot for being a home dog. Um, but that being said, even with, you know, most people predicting Alabama, I, I think this is a really talented Texas team, maybe not as deep, but you know, has the talent and it should be, it should allow Alabama to test some things. I mean, you, you look at some of the areas that Alabama needs to test the offensive lines, one of them, cornerbacks are another one. Um, I think Texas will, will be able to kind of like challenge them in those areas. And maybe you'll see a, a truer, you know, test of what Alabama has. Raheel, let's, let's talk about from the Texas defensive perspective. I don't think Alabama is going to be a fair assessment of their defense. So at what point do we know, all right, the defense has taken steps in the right direction? I, I think you look at that OU game. That's going to be a good measuring stick. You've got uh, UTSA coming up, which put up a lot of points against the University of Houston. There's a lot of potential matchups where you look at this defense and go, okay, they look better, right? And they're actually producing and not just looking, but actually producing on the stat side. Because as I mentioned, you know, you – just watching every single game, seeing this defense last year, the couple, you know, even two years ago, they looked slow and, and now they looked much faster. But again, it's ULM, right? So it's a different comparison. So I, I think by that OU game, you'll have a pretty good snapshot of is this a good defense or is this a lot of the same from last year? What, and Rahil will keep it with you, what will be considered a successful season? Because you look at that schedule and I think there's a lot of things you think about the Big 12, like, man, I don't know, Baylor should be okay. Oklahoma, I don't know. Like, there's a lot of I don't knows, yeah. but I know Texas fans do jump off the ledge easily. So, is it is it eight wins considered successful after the five wins last year? Is it nine if they get destroyed by Bama? Like, you know, what what what's the shake out there? I, I'm just gonna make the joke first before anybody else does. Beating Kansas would be a good start. Like, <laughs> like I'll just take because I know I know you're I know how everyone's gonna be, and I know how you guys are gonna say. So, look, I'm gonna make the Kansas joke. But for me, it's going to be, look, you got to beat OU. In this Alabama game, this is a good measuring stick of where you are in terms of where your talent is for the potential SEC move maybe as early as next year. So, like, looking at that, um, getting to the Big 12 championship game, I think that's a legit goal. Like, you can get to the Big 12 championship game and then see what happens. But that's going to be a pretty good measuring stick based on all the weapons that you have and all the lack of weapons that other schools have right now in the Big 12. Tony, I, I would say for Alabama, I mean, they clearly look like one of the best teams again in the country. It's like Georgia, Alabama, and everybody else. That being said, last year, I forget how the number, I think it's what, six of eight games came down in the last few minutes for Alabama. There was a, at least a one-score game in the fourth quarter. Uh, you can remind me of the stat, but it's, there were a lot of close games. The Arkansas game, the Florida game, the A&M game, there were a lot of close games in the fourth quarter. What has to be different this year? I think, I mean, when you look at this Alabama team, I think that just the mentality around this team has to be better. Last year, it, it, there was a lot of just distractions off the field that, you know, I mean, and, and injuries also hurt Alabama last year too. But I think the biggest thing that kind of derailed Alabama was some of the distractions and so the, some of the younger players that had the talent to step up and, and maybe fill in some of those spots for the injuries. They weren't ready because they were too, I don't know, in their heads about not playing early and stuff like that. So, 
um, those breaks are going to happen to every team. You know, you're going to have injuries. You're going to have uh, adversity that every top team is going to have to deal with that. So there are no excuses for Alabama, but they have they have a deep enough roster that should be able to handle that if their head's right, if their players are, you know, I hate to say it because it's so cliche, but buying into this Alabama process and all that jazz, if that goes right, I mean, you're you're looking at this team. There's not many teams that can match them on talent with both sides of the ball. I think this defense that Alabama has could be the best defense Nick Saban's ever put together. You look at the pass rushers, um, if they can, you know, establish the secondary, it's going to be lethal because if you got Will Anderson and Dallas Turner and Chris Broswell, I mean, that's three of the top, you know, I think with with Will Anderson and, and Dallas Turner, you got two of the top five pass rushers in the nation. And I think maybe Braswell could even be a sneaky top 10 guy. I mean, I'm, I'm not just trying to be a, a homer here with those assessments. I really think that these guys are are some of the best pass rushers. And to have all three of them on the same team is, is going to be absolutely scary. And so I, I think, you know, Alabama has a lot of potential to live up to, but um, it certainly has the talent to be a, a special team this year. Looks like uh, five games last year. I hate hearing year. that. Uh, I, I gonna... hate hearing that. I did some research. <laughs> By research, I looked on Google. Uh, it looks like five games last year came down to one score. The uh, Florida game, obviously, that was a nail bite of the AM game that AM ended up winning. Did I say that already? You've got the LSU game. Uh, you've got the Auburn game. So, okay, excuse me, four. So, four of those games came down to the, the final score uh, LSU, Auburn, AM, and uh, the Florida game. So, a lot of close games. Raheel, what are the keys for Texas this weekend? Well, I guess just show up because based on what Tony just said, <laughs> this could be one of the best defenses Nick has ever put together. So, I mean, I guess keep it within the number. But, you know, you, you look back at that Miami game last year, right? They just destroyed them. So you go, ooh, uh, another comp I was looking at is like, who's better right now in terms of talent, right? Last year's Tennessee team or this year's Texas team? Just overall SEC talent, right? Like Matching up against Alabama. Because Alabama destroyed Tennessee. So I know it's two different things. And look, you have a young quarterback still trying to find his way on, on the college, uh, you know, on the college stage right now with Quinn. So to me, the keys to the game is just, you know, get that offense going, get the ball into the hands of Bijan, Xavier, um, any of the other receivers that are ready to make some plays, and then come up with some key stops, right? Come up with something that can keep it close and put some put some pressure on Alabama because obviously they're the best team in the country. If you can just put some pressure on them and take into the fourth, I mean, if a third string quarterback can pull off the upset last year, then why can't Texas and Quinn? So that was a shot. Yeah. That was a shot at Zach Calzada. That was a shot. <laughs> Where is Zach these days? He's third string at Auburn. That's what I thought. Okay. Tony. You know what? One of the things I'll bring up for Texas, is if they're going to beat Alabama, is you you really do look at Bijan Robinson, and, and you know you you'll be able to see. You know, Texas A&M's exploited this at times. Alabama has trouble guarding versatile or you know multi-dimensional running backs, guys that can catch out of the backfield. You know that they've struggled at picking those guys up, those and tight ends. So I mean, if Texas can you know get Bijan going in the passing game, maybe you could you know rip off a few you know, 20, 30 yard gains where he's just left open somehow. And, you know, he's an athlete. So, you know, you get him the ball in those kind of situations. And that could be a big play, especially for a guy like Ewers, who's going to need to have some of those check downs, some of those safer passes to get going, get his confidence going. Um, that's one way that I think that Texas probably has the best shot at, at maybe causing some damage at Alabama is, is, is getting Bijan, you know, up against the linebacker and seeing if he can beat him. Tony and Rahil, we appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much, man. Good luck, Tony. Yeah. See you down there.